Matt here from Tyke, going to take you through a very, very brief walkthrough on how to create some JSON endpoints from a SOAP web service WSTL. And we're actually going to use a live SOAP web service and put a facade on it so that you're able to call it with JSON. So quite simple here. I'm going to use this WSTL here, which um, you can get from the guide that accompanies this as well. So I'm going to walk you through this and it should take us about five minutes to set this up. So you come into the type dashboard and you're going to go into the API screen here. Then you come over to import APIs. We'll do from WSDL. And what we'll do is grab the contents of this WSDL here, which you're welcome to use, or you can use one that you already have available. I'm going to paste this in, come up. I know that this WSDL has an issue with the script tag, so I'm going to take it out. And our upstream target is where our actual service lives. And I know that that is this right here. So I take that, come back to my dashboard. And after that, click Generate API. Now, some APIs have been generated. So if I go into number conversion here, you can see if I come over to Endpoint Designer that two endpoints have been created. One is number to dollars and the other one is number to words. We're going to work with the number to words one. So the first thing that I'm going to mention is that if you don't want it to be number conversion slash number conversion slash number to words, which is a little bit tough, what you can do is just tweak the relative path here so it is just slash number to words. And what I'll do is update update API, and you'll see that now we have number conversion slash number to words. The URL rewrite should be here automatically from the WSDL import, and we're going to leave that. And that's just going to point to our web service here. We're going to add two things though. We're going to add a body transform, and we're also going to add a modify headers. So for the body transform, this is going to be for us, basically what we need to do is we need to transform the traffic going to the web service, and then we need to transform the, the stuff coming back from the web service. So our, our request there, so from the client, is gonna be in JSON, so that's gonna be our input type. Now our template, which I already have made for this one, is going to look like this here, and I will explain it very quickly. So this is, this is the SOAP request that I want going to my SOAP web service. And what I want is I want this variable called number to convert to basically be taken from my JSON payload and mapped into this here. And then this will then be forwarded to that SOAP web service. So I have number to convert. That means that what I need to do is when I create this request from the client, I need to specify something sort of like this. So number to convert, this value will be mapped into between this little template here. So I'm going to test that. And as you can see, it does correctly map the 35 in there. So now, if I were to actually go and test this in something like SOAP UI, this request would work. Now what we need to do is come back up here and go to response. And our input type from this is what's coming back from the SOAP web service. And that is going to be XML. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert the XML into a JSON response. So for that, what we need to do is, and I've already got mine made up, we're going to return back a JSON element that says, that's called converted number. Let me just paste that in here. And basically, we need to map the values from the SOAP response into this. And I know that a SOAP response from this service looks like this here. And that's what I've created this from. So what we see is envelope, body, number to dollars response, number to dollars result. And that's how it's nested. And that's exactly how I've done things here. Envelope, dot envelope, dot body, dot number to dollars response, dot number to dollars result. And when I click test, you'll see that that is then returned in JSON format. This is exactly what we need to put that RESTful facade onto our SOAP web service. So with that being done, let's do update and we'll do update API. And we've got a couple things left to do here just to finish this up. So in the request, 
what we need is we need the content type to be equal to text slash XML. And that means that when the request comes in, the content type will then be transformed into text.xml, which is what the SOAP web service is expecting. So let me click add. And in the response, it's gonna be coming back as XML. That's what the content type is gonna be. And we actually need that to be application JSON. So if we go like this, content type, and we do application slash JSON, do add, there we go. Now this should be all ready to go at this point. And we want to make sure that we have clicked update here. Update API, awesome. Now we will come over to Postman. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test this endpoint that is technically a SOAP web service. And I'm going to send some JSON to it. It's going to then be transformed, sent to the SOAP web service, and then brought back as XML and transformed into a JSON response. So this is a previous one that I've tested. So let's just change this to 35. And when I hit this endpoint, this is gonna be using all the infrastructure that we just set up, which took us just a few minutes. And this is going to now return a, it should say $35 down here. And there we go. Now we have a RESTful facade on our SOAP web service. No code necessary, and obviously this was done in just a matter of minutes.